So, in today's lecture, what we will do is uh, we will talk about how to solve the uh, eigenvalue problem, okay, and uh, how to find eigenvalues numerically. That is the idea. Now, um, what we will do is we will take a very simple example, the classical example that you know how an eigenvalue problem looks. So, consider this equation d square u by d x squared plus lambda squared u equals 0, okay, and subject to the boundary conditions equals 0. So, of course, you know what the uh, eigen function is and what the solution is for this problem. So, they are u of x is a n sin n pi x. That, this is your uh, solution and the lambdas are going to be n squared pi squared. So, since you have a closed form solution, you know what the eigenvalue is and uh, but supposing you do not know the eigenvalue and you have to actually calculate the eigenvalue, what you would have is to possibly write a computer code to solve this problem and this equation is linear and homogeneous, u equal to 0 is, so basically this is the solution. If we have to find this numerically, what would you do? You would possibly write a finite difference code. Finite difference code. And what is going to happen is this numerical algorithm would always converge to the trivial solution u equal to 0 because that satisfies the equation, okay. So, this would converge to u equal to 0 because that satisfies the differential equation and the boundary condition. It is not going to converge to n sin n pi x. Okay. The other alternative is to possibly get the solution by using the shooting method. Okay. So, how would you, I just want to use this example to illustrate how do you convert a boundary value problem where you are specifying the condition at two endpoints at 0 and 1. I want to convert it to an initial value problem where and then solve. Okay. So, the boundary value problem. is converted to an initial value problem. So, you have to specify two conditions at the location 0, okay. So, here both the conditions are specified at the same location x equal to 0 because I have a second order system, okay. One is going to be the value of u itself and the next one is going to be the value of the derivative, okay. So, how do you convert this to an initial value problem? I am going to define a new variable v which is du by dx, define v as du by dx in which case d square u by dx square becomes dv by dx equals minus lambda square u and du by dx becomes v. 
So, what I have done is I have converted a second order system to a system of two first order equations. Okay, I am defining du by dx as v that gives me dv by dx is minus lambda square u. So, basically a second order system is converted to a system of two first order equations okay so clearly at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 what is the value of u i need to specify both u and v i need to specify both u and du by dx we need to specify what u and v the value of u at x equal to 0 is 0 is the same as the original problem that we are trying to solve look i'm trying to find a solution to this problem okay by converting it to an initial value problem so u at x equal to 0 is 0 but what about v i don't know what v is so u prime or du by dx at x equal to 0 is something which I do not know. I need to f make an assumption, make a guess for this value and what I would do is if I guess a value here and if I want to integrate this up till x equal to 1 because now it is an initial value problem I can use Runge kata or Euler's method and do this integration. I integrate this up to x equal to 1. I will find what is the corresponding value of u at x equal to 1. Okay. So, clearly the value of u at x equal to 1 depends upon the guess value. For different values of this guess, I will get different values of u at x equal to 1. For some value, I will get the u at x equal to 1 equal to 0. So, that is my solution. You understand? So, d, so du by dx at x equal to 0 is guessed. We iterate upon this till we get u at x equal to 1 equal to 0 because that is the boundary condition which I need to satisfy. I need to satisfy the boundary condition u at x equal to 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, I need to get that and for some guess value I would get this. So, what I have to do is I have to do a combination of a Newton Raphson kind of method because I have to solve this algebraic equation. This is the algebraic equation which I have to solve. I have to combine my Newton Raphson method with an integration because I start with the guess value, I integrate it out, I check that condition and then I iterate till I get a solution. Unfortunately, even if you do it this way, what is going to happen is you would get a zero solution because the computer does not know that you are looking for a non-zero solution. Okay. Here again, but this is the algorithm. So, here again we may hit u equal to 0 as the trivial solution. And so basically that defeats the purpose. But I just illustrated this to tell you how a boundary value problem is converted to an initial value problem. Okay. So you just have to define these new derivatives and then you convert it to an initial value problem. Okay. So now I am going to take this idea and illustrate how we are going to go about solving our problem which is the problem of stability of this flow through two circular uh, arcs or two uh, concentric rings okay of course in this problem it's quite easy uh, because it's, it's a one dimensional problem what you can do is you can choose different values of the guess 
and just integrate it, do not do any iteration and plot the value of u at x equal to 1 for different guess values. So, for some guess value because the, if this is non-zero, if this is non-zero, you will definitely get non-zero solution because you are giving different slopes, right. So, what you are going, I am saying is if I look at this problem here, u at x equal to 0 is 0, this is x. What we are trying to do is u at x equal to 0 is 0, I keep giving different slopes for different slopes and this is x is equal to 1, this is x equal to 1. So, uh, this is the right solution. If I give a very large slope, it is going to be positive, it is going to be beyond it. If I give a slightly lower slope, it is going to be like this. If I have different slopes, these are my guesses. My guess is, is just changing the slope here. If the slope is too low, what is going to happen? It will integrate and at x equal to 1, the function becomes negative. It is not 0. If the slope is too high, then the value of the function at x equal to 1 is positive. For the right slope, it is exactly 0, okay. So, one way to do it is just make a plot, just assume different slopes, make a plot of what the values that u, would, u is at x equal to 1, find the slope for which it is 0, okay, and that gives you the solution. But uh, I can do this as long as I have only a one dimensional problem, but supposing I have a larger dimensional problem, then I need to have a slightly better way of doing this, okay, and that is what we are going to discuss. So, I can make a plot of, you can plot u at x equals 1 for different guesses. and find the guess for which u at x equal to 1 is 0, which means now I am going to say the guess value, the guess value is on the x axis and I am plotting u of x equal to 1 here, you will get some curve like that. So, for some guess value, the u is 0 and that is what we need, okay. I see a lot of blank faces, so I just keep proceeding without trying to shed more light. Anyway, I think when you uh, implement this code and get the solution, it will be clear. So, maybe it is a good uh, idea to just uh, find the uh, Eigen function for this very classical problem using this method and see if you can actually get uh, sin n pi x. Then you can go and uh, solve this Sparrow problem, okay. So, uh, what we are going to do for solving the Sparrow problem is just an extension of what we have just discussed. Um, now, we come back to this Sparrow paper. And uh, basically after you do the linearization and that is what we discussed last class, we get a fourth order equation equation in u and u is basically the radial velocity component. and a second order equation in V, the tangential velocity component. So, what you do is you just go through the algebra and eliminate the pressure term and the z component of velocity and this is what you will get. And clearly, you need six conditions, right? So, we are going to use the shooting method, and but with a small modification. So, I am going to convert this fourth order equation in U2 for first order equations, okay? And the second order equation in V2 to first order equations, okay? So, we convert the 
boundary value problem to an initial value problem okay and uh, yeah it is it is the radial velocity component this is the theta component the tangential component is the theta so this is for the perturbed state this is v theta and v z but when i but what i have done is i have eliminated v z so is is that right yeah i will uh, this is v r and v theta no v theta was the this thing so what i'm saying today is right okay what i'm saying today is right so you need to uh, we had to eliminate two variables one was pressure and i think i, I may have uh, said the wrong thing yesterday but what i'm saying today is right so you don't have to worry about that okay i'm glad you remembered this i was i was not sure how many guys actually remembered what i said yesterday yeah but i think i may have said the wrong thing yesterday but this is right we are in with uh, theta so uh the boundary condition so the one of the variables the variables will be u u dash u double dash and u triple dash okay and v v dash these are the six ordinary differential equations that we get like we had earlier we had an ordinary differential equation one for u and one for du dx v is du dx yeah and remember at the inner wall at the inner wall we know u equals u dash equals v equals 0 okay so what i have to do is like i was guessing earlier only for one uh, value du by dx at x equal to 0 now we have to guess the second derivative the third derivative of u and the first derivative of v at x equal to 0 guess u dash u double dash u triple dash and v dash at the inner wall okay and now i know everything i integrate forward and check what it is at the outer wall check the values at the outer wall okay v check the values of u u dash and v at outer wall we check the values of u u dash and v at the outer wall if they are zero that means the guess value is right if they are not zero then i have to iterate okay but my problem is you have to make sure that you converge to a non zero solution because if you converge to zero of the solution then that defeats the purpose okay so we need to iterate on these guess values till the u u dash and v at the outer wall are zero okay Till So now 
So basically, I need to get three values, right? So I'm basically looking for a, something like a three-dimensional vector. There is some three-dimensional vector which is going to be a solution to my problem and give me a non-zero solution, which is going to satisfy my homogeneous equation, homogeneous boundary conditions, and give me a non-zero solution. Okay. So basically, why is it a three-dimensional vector? Because uh, the three-dimensional vector will be the values of these variables at x equal to zero. So we are looking for a three-dimensional vector. Okay, and uh, clearly. For some value of uh, u double dash, u triple dash, and v dash, let us say u double dash equals a1, u triple dash equals a2, and v dash equals a3, this is the solution to the eigenvalue problem. Suppose, I mean that is a solution of course and I am saying that this is a solution and what we are trying to do is we are trying to find this a1, a2, a3. Okay, our job is to find this a1, a2, a3. Now rather than look at this as a three dimensional vector, I am going to solve three auxiliary problems okay? and that is what he explains. We can write this. Uh, as for example a1 times 100 zero zero plus a2 times 010 zero zero plus a3 times 001 zero zero okay so what we can do is we can solve this initial value problem which means what we solve the first problem, auxiliary problem u1 with the following initial conditions. Maybe I should do it in a slightly better way. When I say u, u dash, u double dash, u triple dash, v and v dash right these are my conditions at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 i'm u and u dash of course are 0 and v is 0 this i can, i don't change because at x equal to 0 these conditions are always satisfied have to be satisfied but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this problem with 100. Zero zero. It means I'm going to assume u double dash is 1, u triple dash is 0, and v dash is 0. So I'm going to solve my six ordinary differential equations with this set of initial conditions. Okay. I'm going to solve the next problem with this set of initial conditions 0, 1, 0. I'm going to solve the final problem with this set of initial conditions. That is, I am only considering one of these in initial conditions to be non-zero. Okay? So that is, I have three problems here. Clearly, because this initial condition is non-zero, I am going to get a non-zero solution because I have given some slope. So at the end of the day, I am going to get a non-zero solution. If everything is homogeneous, I'll get zero solution, because but but by making this non-zero, uh, and I do the integration, I will get some kind of a curve. I'll get some solution which I'm going to call u1. So let us say the solution to this is u1. The solution to this is u2. The solution to this is u3. Okay. So what have I written here? I have written here the initial conditions which 
I am going to use to solve my six order problem. I am going to convert my fourth order and second order equation into six first order equations, okay. Six first order equations means any six initial conditions. The initial conditions are going to be on u, u dash, that has to be 0, v has to be 0, the u double dash has to be, I am giving a non-zero value because I am writing this as if it is a unit vector, I am writing this as a unit vector 0, 1, 0, I am writing this other one as a unit vector 0, 0, 1, okay. And uh, now I can get my solutions u1, u2, u3, okay. So u1 is the solution to the first problem, u2 is the solution to the second problem, u3 is the solution to the third problem. I am using basically the same notation as what Sparrow is using. So clearly, the actual situation is going to be with initial condition A1, A2, A3. So when the initial condition is 1, 0, 0, I know the solution U1. When the initial condition is going to be A1 here, it is going to be A1 times U1 because the problem is linear, okay. When the initial condition is 1 for U triple prime, the solution is U2. So when the actual solution is A2, which is what we are trying to find out, the solution is going to be A2 times U2, okay, because the system is linear. And uh, when the initial condition here is A3, it is going to be A3 times U3, okay. So basically what I am trying to tell you is, when, if the initial condition which we are seeking, the guess value which we are seeking for which the solution is correct is A1, A2, A3, the value of U at the end at x equal to 1 will be? A1 times U1 plus A2 times U2 plus A3 times U3. When U double prime equals A1 at x equal to 0, at x equal to 0, U double prime is A1 and U triple prime is A2, V prime equals A3 the u at x equals the end point, end point which I believe is x equal to 1. I am integrating to make sure that the boundary conditions at the other end are satisfied, right? So let us say you are integrating up to 1. It is going to be a1 times u1 at x equal to 1 plus a2 times u2 at x equal to 1 plus a3 times u3 at x equal to 1. You understand? u1, u2, u3 are the solutions when my initial conditions as 1. So when my initial condition is a1, the value, the function, the solution is going to be a1 times u1. And what is a1 times u1 at x equal to 1? That would be the contribution because of the first non-homogeneity. But actually my system ha has three non-zero initial conditions. It can possibly have three non-zero initial conditions. So I need to find the cumulative effect of all three. So when I am considering A2 here, the solution is going to be A2 times U2. When I consider A3, it will be A3 times U3 and this should be 0. Because I want the condition that the U has to be 0 at the final point at the other wall, okay. Similarly, u dash at x equal to 1 equals 0 implies a1 u1 dash at x equal to 1 plus a2 u2 dash at x equal to 1 plus a3 u3 dash at x equal to 1 is 0. See, this is, these things, you, when you are doing the integration, one of the variables you are going to be calculating is going to be the derivative after you have converted it to the uh, system of uh, ordinary differential equations. One of the variables you will calculate is the derivative. So all you have to do is do the integration with 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 and uh, directly you get these values. Okay, and what about the other one? The other boundary condition is 
v at x equal to 1 is 0 and have a 1 So, again when a1, a2, a3 are your initial conditions, the value of v at the left at the other wall is going to be given by a1 times v1 plus a2 times v2 plus a3 times v3 and you want this to be 0. So, our job now is to make sure that a1, a2, a3 are non-zero. We are looking for a1, a2, a3 to be non-zero. And now I have a system of linear equations. So basically, what I want is the determinant of the coefficients should be zero. That's the idea. Okay. So to get a non-zero solution for the a1, a2, a3, for the AIs, we need the determinant of this matrix u1, u2, u3 to be 0 at x equal to 1. So clearly the values of this, the solutions u1, u2, u3 will depend upon that wave number we had k and the Reynolds number which is a dimensionless parameter which comes into the equation. Okay? So I am saying that the determinant is a function of k and Reynolds number. What is k? The wave number of the disturbance that we have given. So what you have to do is for different value, you will fix a value of k, you will calculate the Reynolds number for which it is 0, either by a Newton Raphson method or just plot the determinant for different Reynolds numbers like we were doing earlier. Okay? So once you find this, then you can make a plot. Now after you do this, you can make a plot of k versus Reynolds number and you will get a curve of this kind. So what uh, has been given in uh, Sparrow is he has given you the a table actually. I am not sure if he has given you a plot. He has given you a table where he is telling you for the different values of k what the Reynolds numbers are and that is what I want you to verify. I think uh, this method is nice because it is com combining what you have learned in uh, linear algebra. Okay. Um, that you can, you are actually looking for a vectorial solution, okay, a three dimensional vector. I am trying to find the solution in terms of the basis vectors. The basis vectors are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. I find the solution to that and then I just say that look, for an unknown, uh, when my initial guess or when my solution is of the form a1, a2, a3, I use the solution with the base vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Construct the impose the condition that at the um, other end point, the boundary condition has to be satisfied. I get a bunch of linear equations and uh, then I put my determinant condition and I get my uh, neutral stability curve. Okay? So it is just that whatever you have learned in mathematics, you are just trying to put, put it all together and uh, trying to find a solu um, an application to a physically uh, relevant problem. Um, what I want to do is just repeat one more time, what is this u1? u1 is the solution 
u1 is actually a vector can it will contain six variables okay with the initial condition that u double prime is 1 at x equal to 0 i just choose this to be 1 and i integrate my six equations this, this i get all these six uh, variables this entire vector i'm calling it u1 okay um yeah maybe uh, yeah that's that's my first solution my um, second solution u2 is with my initial condition as 1 for the u double uh, u triple prime everything else is 0 and u3 is with everything else 0 but v dash is 1 once i calculate this you are integrating from the inner wall to the outer wall at the outer wall you know the values of u u dash because these are the variables you are solving for okay so u at the outer wall you just have to calculate for all the three solutions for the three different initial conditions these are the three things at the outer wall u dash at the outer wall is the second variable and v da, uh, v at the outer wall is your fifth variable the way i have written it okay so when you write the code actually you'll understand what is to be done so i think beyond a certain point me explaining on and on doesn't make any sense so when you actually put these things together and start writing a computer program then things will become more clear okay um, but uh, your job so tomorrow what we'll do is we'll meet in msb you guys will uh, derive the uh, equations the base solution and um, also the linearized equations so we'll come with the cylindrical coordinates neighbor stokes equation and then we'll go through the process once the equations are derived then writing the code is not a problem okay so we'll stop right now